Hey everybody, Steve, your DIY dude here. Uh, we are gonna be pulling out the 68 RFE on our 2012 Ram 2500. This old girl's got about 300,000 miles on it, and so it is time to do a rebuild on it. The, engine, the transmission hasn't failed yet, but every day I drive in, I'm like, is this the day? And I don't like that feeling, so I'm gonna take it out, uh, put a new torque converter in it, uh, rebuild the whole transmission, put some billet parts in there, and uh, get it done for a lot cheaper than what you would have to get done in a shop. So uh, stick around and let's do this together. So bust out your tools and put away your wallets because we're doing it ourselves. So we got a 2012 Ram from the 68 RFE up on uh, four jack stands underneath um, with an extra little bottle jack just as kind of a safety measure I don't have a I don't have a car lift jack yet that's one of the future uh, tools I'll have in this barn but um, so yeah just jack it up on all sides get it up high enough to where you think you can get the transmission out from underneath um, I'm gonna plan on wheeling it back to the back here and then pulling it out right here so that's gonna be my highest point um, uh, easiest way to get it out. So once you got your car up on uh, jack stands, feel free to disconnect the negative terminal of your battery. We are gonna be pulling some connectors loose. Uh, and then to get started, you gotta pull this cross member off underneath. And then you got a uh, drive line you gotta get out. If you have the extended, if you got the long bed, four wheel drive, um, you'll have the four bolts, I think those are 15 millimeter bolts on the U-joint yoke at the very back of the drive shaft. You'll have two, I think 15 millimeter bolts at the center, and then this pulls straight out of the back of the transfer case. For us to get this drive line out, it's coming out of the transfer case. And then since this is a long bed, we have this uh, connecting point right here. So we got to remove this whole bracket <clears throat> and then we got four um, bolts down there that take off the drive line. We got four 15, uh, 15, yep, 15 millimeter bolts right here at this U joint. Uh, we got two 15 millimeter bolts holding up the middle and then it's just going to slide right out of that transfer case. So you ready to catch it. Might be best if you got two people, people under here to help out. That's it. Slips right out of that transfer case. There's a little rubber boot. Yeah, these two 15 millimeter bolts holding that middle part. And then the four 15 millimeter bolts at the end comes right out. So we're gonna go ahead, get this bracket underneath the transfer case off right here. It's uh, held on by these two bolts right here on this side, these two bolts right there on that side. Um, and then also, this skid plate underneath has four connecting bolts right here, one, two, and then two more on that side. And, uh, and this guy is held on by these two bolts right here. And so let's go ahead and remove that and get on to the next step. We got um, that first cross member off, which was right above, below this guy. Um, to remove this guy, I would first recommend putting a tie strap underneath your transmission to help support the uh, transfer case and the weight of the transmission while you pull this guy off because this, this cross member um, has these, uh, this little weight bearing plate to help support some of that load of the um, tranny. So uh, before you yank this guy, just put some extra uh, little tie strap around the transmission to give it some uh, security. I just put it around the frame rails. Just make sure when you're putting it around these, these frame rails, you're not pinching any uh, wire looms. You're not pinching any of these, uh, I'm not even sure what these lines are, if they're fuel lines or they're just some exhaust research lines. Um, 
so yeah just be careful with that and then once you get uh, these four bolts loose you have three more bolts underneath here right here right there and then right here so get those three off and that guy will uh, pop right down we got this guy off so these are these uh, 15 millimeter nuts that are all gonna be right here one two three that are gonna be in these three slots uh, make sure you uh, get a little wire loom uh, plug puller and uh, kind of looks like uh, this guy right here use that you can pull these plugs up out of this uh, out of this housing so you don't destroy them you can reuse them and then uh, let's work on getting this transfer case off All right after we get this cross member down uh, let's gonna work on getting this drive shaft off real quick looks like we got four 15 millimeter bolts uh, let's get those off we'll uh, get a tie strap and put it off to the side uh, we're just gonna keep it uh, we're not gonna mess with that we're just gonna remove it from here it'll slide out of the uh, transfer case uh, or it'll just it'll come off the transfer case right here and we'll be good to go front drive line I just got a little clove hitch uh, tied to the frame rail so when I loosen it down I can just kind of hang it off to the side but each one of these bolts is 5 8 and there's four of them and this drive lane freely spins um, since the car is jacked off the ground so to prevent it from spinning while you're trying to get these bolts off you can I just threw a uh, an extension ratchet in there in the yoke just to act as like kind of a, a middle fulcrum and I held it while I was loosening the bolts to get them off so hopefully that tip helps. I was having a difficult time getting an impact of any type in there when I was uh, um, rotating this uh, drive line around. So I just ended up using a 5 8 uh, swivel socket or a swivel uh, ratchet. So if you got one of these, that's probably the best uh, tool for this right here. All right, this front drive line can be a little bit of a pain to get out. So once you get those bolts out, I just went ahead and sprayed it with some uh, penetrating oil, some PB blaster, and uh, I let it sit there for a couple hours, and then I took a sledgehammer and I beat on the knuckle right here, and it freed a lip right here, then I rotated it a full 180 and I beat on the other side, and uh, that freed it up. So I just recommend getting that PB blaster so it can kind of uh, separate a little bit, and uh, it came out a lot easier after I did that. So. Just PB blast it, sit on it for a little bit, and then come back. All right, after you get that uh, drive line removed, let's go ahead and remove this bracket. We got four bolts, one, two, and then three in there, and then four right in that hole. So get those out, and this bracket will come off. All right, here's the uh, transfer case out. This is what goes into the transmission. Um, here's the six bolts that you got to get out. One, two, three, four, five, six and uh, this top guy right here is the top innermost one and it's, it's a pretty big pain. You have to reach all the way around to get, and I, had, I got this stubby on it and it was pretty much just doing that for a little while until I can get it freed enough to get it all the way out. So that was my best bet. So six bolts, a uh, hose right here, electrical connector, another four bolts for those uh, for the front drive line, and that uh, will come out. All right, once we get this uh, this bracket off under here, I think we got five or six 14 millimeter nuts that we gotta get off this uh, back of the transmission, or the front of the transfer case, however you wanna look at it. And they're right here. One, two, you got one on the side, three. I think you got two on top, four, five, six, and I think you got one on this side. So six 14 millimeters. Uh, before you do that, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get this wire disconnected. It looks like there's a little safety s possible. It looks like it just pushes in right here, and then you just pry it right off. So let's go ahead and get that wire loom off and get those nuts off. Um, just uh, be ready for when you do get those last couple nuts off. Make sure you have this uh, transfer case either supported by another pair of hands or a jack because I'm just doing this by myself so that's uh, my plan is just putting a, tran a tranny jack underneath it uh, 
unscrew the last couple nuts and then pull it off. So just be safe. All right, after I got the uh, transfer case off, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the transmission. We just got these uh, eight millimeter bolts all along the drain pan, all along the uh, pan of the transmission. And so just, I'm gonna start taking off most of these eight millimeters on the front uh, and then kind of pull it back this way and let it drain out the back a little bit into some buckets. It's gonna be a little des uh, messy, so kind of be prepared for that. All right, so we're moving this stuff right up here. We got our speed sensor. For whatever reason, my uh, speed sensor connector is not freeing itself. This one popped right off just fine. This one, I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna have to get a new connector and re-splice that on. It's just got 300,000 miles on it. It's, for whatever reason, there's dirt in there and I've tried to spray it out and clean it, but I've just busted the plastic up pretty good trying to get it off. So probably just gonna buy a new connector for that one. I'll work on it a little bit more, but uh, this guy pops straight off here, um, and then this guy has two. What size is this? Uh, thir this uh, bracket has two 13 millimeter bolts holding this uh, shift linkage on, and that'll pop right off. Getting this connector off, this red tab pulls straight down. Then you gotta pull this guy all the way down and you wiggle it up. I had to spray some, uh, just kind of some PB blaster a little bit just to get that freed from the plastic. And uh, these guys are a little bit of pain in the ass, but you just gotta push this little, these two tongs down and then pull it straight out. So just push down and pull out. All right, on this side you got uh, your pressure sensor and uh, you got a red tab, you gotta flip it up that way, push this button. Um, and I had to spray some lube around it and use a screwdriver from the side to kind of pry it off, um, pop it off a little bit. And then uh, we got a couple, just a wire loom up here, still connecting to the top. And then uh, this bracket, which I might connect when I start lowering it, but I'm gonna try to get that bracket off if I have uh, the ability to. And then we gotta get these uh, transmissions lines off. Out. So we just got um, all those lines free. We got two sensors right here. You got your solenoid pack um, plug in, and then on this other side, you've got to get get that dipstick tube free. Uh, so got a little, almost a little dirt in there. Wouldn't have been good. Uh, get your two uh, transmission lines free, undo this connector right here, and then you got one more connector right there, and that should be it for this side. All right, we're looking from the back of the transmission. Uh, we're getting our wire loom freed up. <clears throat> so on this uh, passenger side, you got this wire loom. It's plugged into the top right there. Uh, disconnect that sensor on the bottom right. Uh, then we got a 10 millimeter. You can get a good visual right there keeping that bracket on. So I'm gonna get that off with a wrench uh, and then we'll be off to working on getting the torque converter off. All right, when you're getting these uh, trans lines out, <clears throat> there's a little white plastic cover. It might be a different color on yours, but slide that out of the way. You're gonna see this retainer housing right here and there's this metal clip that goes on there. Just pop up one of those ends and then pop that clip out and your line will slide out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove this inspection plate cover. <clears throat> we got three eight millimeter bolts. <clears throat> up here on the passenger side, right up in here, if you can, it might be too dark. Um, right up in 
here is where we're gonna get the access to the torque converter bolts off. So we got, I believe, six to eight of those guys, and uh, I think they're 15 millimeter. All right, for removing these uh, torque converter bolts, kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, there is a bracket that sits right here. That's the bracket right there. It's got four, I think, 15 millimeter bolts. It sits right here. Take that guy off. That's pretty much your only hope to get these bolts out. Uh, and then I used a uh, ratchet with an extended handle. And uh, you need an 18 millimeter deep socket to get in there. And so once you got that, I was able to break it loose. But it takes a little bit of elbow grease. So uh, prepare for the suck for that guy because you got six of them. <laughs> All right. So what I've been doing is here's the flywheel in here. And I got this little, kind of like little bent flathead screwdriver. I've just been sticking it in there and moving it from the passenger side towards the driver's side. And it's been rotating. And uh, you should be able to see a bolt. There's the bolt right on in there. And you gotta get that guy out. And there should be, uh, you just keep spinning it around. There should be eight of them, I believe, or six. Um, might be six. And then once you free it, uh, this uh, torque converter will freely spin, and that's how you know you got them all out. Extra little tip for the day. Um, I got this extended handle, and it's barely enough torque to get that bolt loose. So what I did is I got another half-inch half inch extension. I threw a three-quarter socket on it, and I'm connecting both of these guys together like this to give myself an extra long... Uh, bar to pry on. Once I did that, these bolts come out pretty easily. And these are what the torque converter bolt looks like. Just little guys. Alright, so we got all the wire harnesses off the transmission. Uh, we got the torque converter um, released from the flex plate. And uh, we are going to, uh, and we got the transmission lines out of the transmission, at least they're loose. Um, as we back the transmission off the flex plate, we'll make sure those hard lines um, don't interfere. These hard lines right here, they can catch on that bell housing, so we gotta um, slowly move it backwards while we are keeping an eye on that to make sure it's free and clear of the bell housing. <laughs> um, we've got all our cables off, our cable, we got our shift cable off, I couldn't free this connector. I'll work on it when the transmission's out. Um, but all our connectors are off on that side. This side, we have this connector off. We have these connectors from the top off. And then um, there is a connector. It's a, uh, I think it's your dipstick um, tube. There's a, I think an eight, eight or 10 millimeter bolt back there. Let's make sure that's free. Um, and we are gonna start <clears throat> lifting this jack up. Up underneath the tranny, I'm gonna put a tie strap around it, secure it, and then we'll start working on these uh, uh, 9 16 bell housing bolts to free it and uh, off the transmission. And we will uh, see if we can pull her pull her back.
for these back bolts on the top of the tranny, I've got a couple uh, extension sets locked together to create pretty much a super long extension. And I've been uh, using an impact or and a swivel head um, to get to these two top ones. They're kind of a pain to get to. So um, you just kind of got to be creative because uh, there's not a lot of hand room to get a wrench in there. Uh, so yeah. All right, so I'm under here. I got super long extension set. You can see all the way to the front of the tranny from the back. So uh, that's what I've been used to get these last two bolts off. And uh, it's working all right. There she is, <laughs> all of her beauty. Uh, sometimes when you uh, don't adequately lift your truck high enough to get the transmission out on the jack stand, you gotta figure out a little body drag. So here she is, ready for the knife. Oh Lord be with me. <laughs> We've got our 68 RFE on the table and we are ready for surgery. For this rebuild, we're going to be throwing in a RevMax valve body, the foundations kit. So it's a build-it-yourself kit, as well as the Transgo ream kit for the SSV switch. <clears throat> uh, I just got a couple uh, assembly goos uh, for the reinstall, for bearings and putting everything together. I've got a RevMax billet flex plate, so we'll be replacing that. Uh, new speed sensors, new pressure sensor, uh, billet input shaft. Uh, We're going to be putting a RevMax pump uh, body on there. I just, it do. I was like, do I really need it? And I was like, gosh, it looks so good. So I had to. All right. Um, even though you see it now, you'll never see it again. So it's kind of stupid, but it's all right. Uh, New Sonics bearings kit. This is the 68 RFE SBK C18. Um, this is going to be the bypasses for uh, 2012 um, to get rid of the uh, inline uh, pretty much thermostat that the transmission has so it never gets locked up. Um, here's a transmission oil filter adapter so instead of the plastic insert we're going to put on a metal one on uh, we got a pump body um, plate to replace and then uh, we're going to do a rev max uh, deep pan so that is um, those components from rev max pretty much and then i went from a, a rebuild kit online um, it's got oem parts it has uh, <clears throat> borg warner clutches um, filter, pump cover, piston seals, and uh, yeah, so it should have pretty much in a bearing kit, or a bushing kit, sorry, so we'll re be replacing all the bushings, so that is going to be a pretty good rebuild kit for around 5500 bucks, and, uh, and that includes the tools which I bought, which are... Uh, um, a bushing install kit and a bushing remover kit and then as well as come some specialty tools like picks and some other things to get the gaskets and o-rings out of this guy